Greetings everyone, the good Sir Knights here, and today we're going to be doing a fun little review. I finally got a lot of my gear in, and with the SR16 finally back in place, we've got a gearbox to review. So, the gearbox, PEC 15, a pretty standard model most people are familiar with. This one's made by FMA. Now, you can adjust the, uh, well basically, I guess we should cover what a PEC 15 is. It's basically a light and two lasers. The first laser is either red or green, depending on if you're doing day or night operations. And there's an infrared laser, which is obviously for night operations, because the infrared will be picked up by NVGs, so you can not have to look down your sights and still have an idea where you'll be hitting targets. So, useful. Very useful. So, you've got your selector switch up here. Right now it's set to uh, press and hold, light, and you can alternate between the ones up here. We'll be covering all those in a second. It comes with a few stickers. They're nothing terribly impressive. They don't stick terribly well, but you can always glue them on or, I guess, clean the surface area a bit better. Something just to make them work a wee bit better. Now you have your top button here. This actually turn activates whatever mode you've got selected in your little covers. This one covers the flashlight, and this one covers the two laser ports. Now, the light and the lasers I was mostly curious about because generally when you're looking into getting any type of laser or light source, you usually end up getting something weak. The Tokyo Maruri little handgun light is pretty, uh, well, I mean, it's not going to reflect back off of white walls into your eyes or anything, but it's okay. The, um, most lasers you get, particularly from less reputable companies, we'll say, overseas, like to be pretty, uh, so far is the good way to put it. So, I actually did a review on, what was it, the... Ozark laser system I had and someone was like, well, how are we supposed to see how far it goes? It says it's bright and it works on the box. Well, I mean, you have boxes like that. One, they tend to lie. But yeah, this was actually pretty bright, but wondering how far you can see. If you're using a laser on a weapon to begin with, you probably shouldn't be shooting more than like 20 meters, 20 to 50 meters anyway. Otherwise, you get massive accuracy issues. But all that aside, we've got our system here. Pick 15, you want to see how good the FMA version is. It was the most recommended off of all the other things. And kill the light here. It's not going to be pitch black, but we'll have a bit of darkness to work with. And we sign in, we go boosh. We've got ourselves a decently bright light here. We can illuminate quite a bit, pretty effectively. Now facing the camera wise, we press the switch. Boosh. It's blinding. It's a pretty powerful little light. Surprising. It uses one, uh, I think it uses two. C134 batteries, but yeah, so flip the switch here. You can just press the tail now and it'll stay on. Press it again to turn it off. Switch it one more time. And you've inactivated laser mode. Also, if you leave the uh, cover on, by the way, your light will turn a little red color. Does it come across red? You can, yeah, you can make out the red. But yeah, your little cover turns it red if you leave it on, so. Cool stuff. Switch it to laser mode again. And our laser is relatively bright. It is zeroed in. There's little knobs on the side you can adjust it from. Just go ahead and do some laser work around here. It's it's a decent green laser. Well, I mean, I say decent. It's actually really, really good. But the thing with green lasers in the dark is they'll generally illuminate the uh, dust particles. So that's why they're preferred for day use. Switch it one more time and we get light and laser. If you really want to kill the battery as fast as possible. Then one more swap off to the side. Turns on the infrared laser. Yeah, you can see it on camera. You wouldn't be able to see that with your naked eye. You can't see where it's going, I don't think. Yeah, no idea where the laser is really going, but it's on. And that's cool, so that's all the settings. I'm going to switch back to just light mode. And we'll turn back on the light, so. Yeah. PEC-15 FMA, then take this off, so the button up here, simple press. If you're not using a grenade launcher, it's easier to get a grip on it, but yeah, it makes a little clicky noise, as you'd expect. The laser adjustments, you can adjust the light. Generally on the real ones, you can make it a lot wider or slimmer, depending on what your prefer preference is, but these are just free rotating screws, they don't do anything. These ones, however, will actually adjust the laser setting. And the laser is not centered with the gun or anything, so you're going to have a little weird angle if you're closer or farther away, particularly airsoft-wise. 
stickers are going to bother me until I can fix them. But yeah, so switch, covers, and batteries go back. Ugh. Batteries going back here. And the little battery port, this unscrews, and you just put them in. And this is where your little tail attaches back here. And I've got it zip tied in place just so it's not free floating and going all crazy. And this is a little remote switch tail, so. It's not the best remote switch tail in the world. The button's like there and you can like press on the sides of it, but it works and it's just, what is it? It doesn't come with any of the, well, I'll say magic tape because that's the Japanese word for it, but Velcro. It doesn't come with any Velcro, so you need to get that hooked up on your own. And yeah, that is the FMA Tech 15 laser light box, dual purpose. Now, having them both combined saves a lot of space and room on the gun. And having it remote switch activated also helps out with a lot with the, because uh, you can set it on the uh, 12 o'clock, you can put it off on the 3 o'clock, but we have room for a camera there, so. Yeah, it works great on top. Apparently, not a lot of people believe that, but it works great on top. You can put it on the, uh, what was it, the 9 o'clock, if you move the sling back. This one's mounted up on the front, but I could get a middle mounted sling part. If I really wanted to, put it over here. So pretty much anywhere but under the gun, which would just look weird. The 6 o'clock, so. Yeah, comfy little thing. The um, lasers aren't going to be terribly useful airsoft-wise because they don't really want you blinding people, understandably. But the flashlight, however, is going to be fantastically useful. If they have any of the events, they're like, oh, we have a little shooting range. You could get the fastest score. Lasers help. Lasers help a lot. And when you're shooting at those farther ones, you've got your red dot sight or whatever optic on your actual gun, so. Yay. So. I think it generally runs between like 45 to 50 bucks for one of these PEC 15s. So if you want something other than a dummy battery box, then this is a phenomenal little option. It's actually pretty well made. So that's what I've got for you guys today. If you're into optics, illumination, and all that fun stuff, even just for the light, it's pretty fantastic because now I don't have to mount it in a weird angle and press a button. And you don't have to pay the extra for a little cattail, and it's bright enough to work. So. That's all I got for you guys. Stay chill for us, everyone. I'll see you in the next video. And uh, then we'll talk about why this little hose is poking out here. Cheers, everyone. Stay chill for us. Chevrolet. 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 Chevrolet.